You will not make a single dime from your digital product unless you are sending traffic to your store. And there are only two ways to get traffic. You can pay for it with ads or you can grow it organically using social media. But in this video, I'm going to show you the one thing that you can do to start flooding traffic to your digital products with people who are ready to buy and only using one platform and all without paying a single dime for ads. Plus, if you stick around to the end of the video, I'm going to show you how you can attract buyers to your digital products, even if you don't have a large following on social media. And another cool thing, even if you don't want to show your face on social media, you're absolutely going to love it. So we're just going to go ahead and dive in. So what's the best platform to drive traffic and sales to your digital products without paying a dime for ads? YouTube. And here's why. Besides the fact that it's 100% free and you're able to put your products in front of the 2.5 billion with a B monthly users who spend an average of about 48 minutes on YouTube each day. YouTube is also a gigantic search engine. It's basically Google with video. This gives you so many advantages when it comes to promoting your digital products. Every day, 122 million YouTube users are going to this platform to learn how to do something or to learn more about something. And you, yes, you can pop up in their search feed on YouTube with just one video. By leveraging YouTube search engine capabilities, you can effectively reach your target audience build your brand, and drive people to your digital products. But we don't just want people, right? We want buyers. And that is why I'm going to show you my exact YouTube script that I've been using for the past year that helps me get free organic leads, sales, clients, all on autopilot. But before I give you the script template, I need you to understand this like you understand fire is hot. You have to structure your videos very specifically for YouTube and here's why. One of the most important metrics you have to master if you want YouTube to show your videos to thousands of viewers is audience retention. If you want YouTube to make your content viral, then you have to prove to YouTube that you actually have content that people want to watch. And YouTube measures that by your videos, audience retention. You see, YouTube wins when people stay on YouTube longer because YouTube can show their ads to more brands and businesses. So if your videos are helping YouTube to achieve its goals, by keeping people on the YouTube platform longer because people are watching your videos longer, then you've won the favor of YouTube. And if you don't get people to watch your videos, then don't expect any favors from YouTube. So the very first thing you need to master to improve your audience retention is your hook. What we're not gonna do is start off every single video is, hey everybody, welcome to my channel, glad you're here, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. That is not how viewers behave on YouTube. They do not like that type of intro. It's almost like putting a wall in front of the rest of your content. And nine times out of 10, those people are going to leave. For YouTube, you need a strong hook. And it can be one of the most difficult pieces to write in your YouTube script. That's why it's part of the video script that I tend to help my clients out with the most. That's why I'm going to give you some of my best practices so you can use them to craft your next video. So one of the first things you got to do is make sure your hook ties into your title and your thumbnail. Now, I know you heard a lot of stuff, but you should not even be writing a script unless you have the title of the video and you already have your thumbnail. And why? Because your title and your thumbnail is what's going to get people to click and your hook is what's going to keep them watching so if your hook which is the first five to ten seconds of anything you say in the beginning of your video doesn't deliver on the promise of your title and your thumbnail then the people aren't going to stick around and your audience retention is going to be harmed now, because most people's audience and teacher spans is around eight seconds, you don't have any time to be playing around. So your hook needs to be strong because you only have eight seconds to keep them watching. So what do you say in the first eight seconds to convince the viewer that you have some quality content? First of all, they really need to learn something that they really want to learn from you. So at the beginning of this video, I said you're not going to make a dime if you don't get traffic to your digital products. If you're in digital products and you're not making any money and you don't know why, Perhaps you've probably stuck around to watch this video and the proof that you're still watching me now means hooks really work. But I'm still going to give you some type of examples of how I help my clients with this. So let's use an example and let's pretend like you're a public speaking coach. And I wrote this down. You guys can't see it, but check this out. It says, do you want to book your first speaking engagement? 
I'm going to show you the seven things that you need to do to make sure you book that first speaking engagement. That's a little bland, right? It's not super exciting and there's no type of wow factor, but check this out. I have helped over 150 clients book their first speaking engagement. And I'm gonna share in this video the one thing that actually sealed the speaking engagement for them. Plus, I'm going to give you a few other insider secrets to ensure you will book that first speaking engagement. Sound a lot more better, right? It's almost like something you wanna keep listening to and watching. You wanna hear that one thing that helped them get their first speaking engagement. So the hook is very important. You gotta be creative, it's gotta be strong and you need to say it right in the very first part of your video. After your hook is done, then you want to move right into the meat of your video. And by meat, this is still not a chance for you to start bigging up your channel and tell them why they're here and if it's their first time to subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Skip the whole process. Your whole purpose of this video and in that moment is to figure out how to keep them watching after you set their hook. And if you stop dropping your name and all your credentials and expertise and big it up and trying to get new subscribers, you're gonna lose them super fast. Now, when I'm creating my YouTube scripts, sometimes I use bullet points and if I'm really knowledgeable about that subject or topic, but I do have some videos where I have to fully write everything out piece by piece. But for you, whatever it is, you just have to figure out how you're gonna deliver your content when you're recording your video in a way that's going to keep you on track so you're not rambling and veering all off subject. So whether it's bullet points or writing out your entire script, either one of those is fine as long as you stick to the script. But one thing I really want to make sure that you understand is to make sure that you don't go too deep. We're not doing a TED Talk video. What you need to think about or talk about is making sure that the viewer gets what they need while they're watching your video. It's kind of like a dopamine hit. So ask questions like, what is one thing they learned or can learn? What is the takeaway? What is the one thing they can do after watching your video? What content that I could put together and create that would give that viewer a quick win? In other words, you want to only give them the tip of the iceberg in your YouTube videos. You want to only give them enough to let them know that you know what you're talking about. And while doing that, you want to make them feel like they've learned something in your video. And right quick, I'm not saying hold back information. I'm not saying clickbait people. What I'm saying is briefly talk about each topic so that they can see how they could do it. So going back to the example I use about this public speaking engagement or public speaker, at the end of that video, did they learn seven things that they can use and take action after your video and be able to apply for their first speaking engagement? The answer should be yes, but there's a guarantee that they're actually gonna get approved when they apply for their first speaking engagement. That's a whole totally different game plan and a whole different video because we all know there's steps, there's a process, there's templates. A lot of things that go into play inside of those steps that they're gonna need to know in order to really get that first speaking engagement. You basically just wanna give them enough to keep their mouth watering and to keep them wanting more. And moving on, another thing you're gonna make sure you have in your YouTube script and in all of your YouTube content is a good outro. Now what I see a lot of people doing when they get towards the end of their video, they'll say, that's it. This concludes, this is the conclusion. We finished, we done. No, what you're doing is telling them that the video is over and it's gonna signal to the viewer that they can just click away and go watch something else. Remember, you don't wanna give any signals that your video is over. Why? Because YouTube values videos that keep people on the platform and watching more videos. So what you can do at the end of your video, you have 20 seconds to add a clickable video on the screen. And that this part of your video, this is where you wanna give that call to action, your CTA. And your call to action should be nudging them and telling them to go watch the next video. Not only does this make YouTube happy because you're getting the viewer to watch more videos and stay on the platform longer, but you're actually gonna earn more points with the customer and the viewer yourself. Because if they watch more and more of your videos, you're nurturing them and warming them up to purchase any of your digital products. So let me give you a quick example of how I am most of my videos. So we use the example of the public speaking engagement scenario. So now that you have the seven steps to book your first public speaking engagement, you might be asking yourself, when I actually apply to be a public speaker, 
What do I actually need to put in the application? Well, that's why you want to watch this next video popping up on your screen. Now that makes sense. It rolls in, it blends. And since they just watched that video, it ties into the next, which is going to boost my chances of them watching my next video. Now this is the way I've been structuring all my YouTube videos for the past year that has brought me at least sales and more clients all for absolutely free because I'm using YouTube which is a 100% free platform. And the cool thing is, I don't worry about views and followers and all that stuff because the content that I put out attracts only the people that have the highest potential of being a customer of mine. And if my content is in alignment with those people, they're much more higher to convert. So I can have a video that only have 100 views, but I might get 20 or 30 or 40 sales because the people that are watching my content are the right people, not just any type of viewers. Now, as promised, I told you if you stick around to the end of this video, I will show you how you can even do this method faceless without showing your face on social media. And the video popping up on the screen right now is my faceless video method. So if you don't want to show your face on social media and still get traffic to your digital products, this is how you would do that. But if you like to learn how to do YouTube and you need a digital product and you want to know one that's actually selling and profitable and profit ready that you don't have to build from scratch and you want this YouTube script, all the things that I'm using. And if you don't want to show your face on social media, I have faceless content that's already done for you. It's like my done for you content vault that all you have to do is download and upload to any social media platform that you're using. Then you want to check out my digital income starter kit. It's one of the great ways for beginners who's looking to make money or passive income with digital products and they're just getting started. I have all the tools and resources all in one place from beginning in the end they help you start making profits every single month on autopilot if you want to learn more about my digital income starter kit then you might want to watch this video popping up on your screen right now because when you pair what you just learned in this video with what you're going to learn in the next it's going to make you way more powerful stay blessed